Welcome everybody, this is Denny with my YouTube channel, Why Is This True? And uh, joining me again after many months is Carl Mollison, who runs a website and a service called TeamArchangel.com. And um, uh, just as for some background, um, I had a reading with uh, Vidya Frazier, who alerted me to the fact that I had an entity attachment, and she immediately recommended Carl. And I went to Carl, I think within two days or so of Vidya's reading, and... Um, and he he did a uh, a session with me, and um, my particular there was several things going on, but the one that was really had my attention was my uh, self medicating with alcohol, and um, I've I've dust I, I've addressed this elsewhere, and we I, we can go into more detail later. But anyway, uh, I I underwent immediate relief, and that was over a year ago, and I have not had the desire to go back and use alcohol for anything much less self-medication I don't you know social situations anything I just it's just out of my life now I'm very grateful to Carl uh, and what he does and um, it's enabled me to move forward in my personal life and my and with with my my passion which is this YouTube channel and so thank you Carl um, big changes for this kid I really appreciate what you did for me well, it so, pleases me, I'm sure, almost as much to hear your story and get that feedback because yeah. this is what I do and why I do it. Right. This, this exact thing to, to help other people. And, and it helps me as well. It's like all light work helps the light worker. Right. They may feel unloved, unsung, and, and uh, unknown, but the light knows they're there. Right. So in, this, in the description, I will put the links to our interview that we did, I think it was in back in October, and I always wanted to do a follow-up, uh, but I've been very busy, and, and Carl's been very busy, He's a lot of changes for both of us since that time. Man, I was so excited to get your email. Well, I was <laughs> excited talking about this, and uh, thinking about it too, and wanting something good to happen here, so I'm... I'm I'm hopeful that we'll get something that's useful and productive and uh, not a, you know, an unnecessary uh, waste of your time. And no, not at all. This is going to this is going to open up a whole new segment to uh, people's interest in this subject, I think, you know, and, and it's 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 kind of an unfortunate um, mm, testimony about the human condition but you know we'll do what we can do but you know this whole this whole celebrity you know following celebrities um is a great drawing card you know um but you know and so so there's going to be people that are going to be uh, in, you know introduced to this and it's going to be their introduction because they're interested in celebrities and they're going to go oh my gosh the, the my world is a lot bigger than i thought it was yes and so well we <laughs> My my response to that is we're all celebrities, but we don't know it. <laughs> right. <laughs> we're, all, we're all celebrities in the light because yeah. they see us as warriors and holders of light and those things that count way more than what we do in our day to day work as humans. Even if we're on the tube, you know, it, yeah. it's still, it, it's just work. It, it's just a human folly for a time. Right. And, you know, an entertainment to the self and all that, and and one another on the human level. But uh, what counts is the divine outreach, the divine realm, and what they want, and and what we're all wanting from that perspective. So, right. so so anyway, um, you'll forgive me if I get giddy. <laughs> well, no, uh, well, see, you you can get giddy. I can't afford that luxury because I have to stay very grounded here and not get yeah. involved. And, you know, the, the ego involvement is the big trap for us all and trying to stay pure to the highest intention. And that, that's what will make things work and not get things contaminated. And, right. and um, you know, but, it, it, you know, I have to be careful because I do get these uh, pats on the back and, and I have to sort of like, OK, that's nice. You mm. know. We underestimate what we do, you know, yeah. as, as light workers. Yeah. But they see it, and they know that the energy goes way out from just the little things we do. It right. spreads, and then it, it just keeps adding to the waves of positivity. So this is about spreading the word that right. things can get better, and there's tools we have. And right. most people don't know the existing tools. Right. So they're floundering. And 
this this is the big well you know I should yeah, say yeah. this the he, interview but. right exactly and uh, not only did they don't know about the tools they don't know about the problem <laughs> yes so, so so they're doubly in trouble <laughs> yes okay and I, I lived that life for a lot of years so I I you know I know what it's like to uh, uh, not have answers yeah. And the light wants me to do a book about channeling, how to channel and the various applications to help other channelers. But it also will be instructive for the people who just read it out of curiosity. So you're gonna. I, I've asked uh, Carl for forgiveness. Now I'm going to ask for your forgiveness. I'm very giddy about this development. I think it, I think it's uh, really good news for everybody, not just for me, but uh, for everyone. So. Uh, Carl sent this to me a few days back. I've been channeling a number of humans back in the light whom I have rescued, and I'm extending it to persons with a history of common interest who likely have a karmic reason to share information on a subject. For example, as a way of validating information on extraterrestrials from angelic channeling, I reached out to Colonel Philip Corso, who wrote the book The Day After Roswell. As he had been a whistleblower late in life, and I heard him on the radio and hence was influenced by him. One thing I know about human spirits back in the light is they have broad knowledge and a vast reach, but will only interact when there is a high purpose and in ways that minimize negative karmic consequences. They limit what they say to the level of sophistication of the questioner and their intentions. He did not disappoint. Most of what he offered validated my previous knowledge, which was my intent, but I learned a few things as well, a few new things as well. I have attached a PDF file of selected questions from two channelings with him which you will find most interesting and which illustrate the possibilities. Typical of light beings, the message is logical, cogent, and word perfect, better than I could do extemporaneously. My question to you is whether you would like to have me channel a deceased expert of your choosing, such as a former whistleblower. This could be even one uh, you, you suspect of working for the dark side. If, as, if, as if he is in the light, he would have karmic reasons to make amends and tell the truth about things. Such a story would even be instructive. My only requirement would be to share the, uh, the right to your possibly publishing, publish the information itself or use it in teaching. Your perspective and expertise would undoubtedly ferret out additional things of interest. You could certainly revisit any of the questions I asked to have answers on the video. The answers might even expand due to your greater knowledge in some areas of, as a questioner. Please let me know your interest. So this came unsolicited and uh, and I was thrilled. It was such a great idea. He sent me the um, uh, the reading that he had done with uh, Phil Corso, which I printed out here. And most most of this I understand will be collected into a book at, at some point. Um, but for the purposes of um, just kind of rolling out this fantastic idea, Carl and I both uh, worked on a, a list of people potentially that 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 he could contact in the light uh, on the subject. So uh, we both came up with lists separately. Turns out the lists were very similar. There was a few exceptions, minor exceptions, and we decided to uh, work with Dwight uh, Dwight Eisenhower, former president, an unidentified agent uh, who has a connection to Dwight Eisenhower, and and then James Forrestal. And uh, so that's what we're going to get into today. And but before we get started on that, I wanted to invite Carl to talk about what has happened since October with him and his work, which I found very interesting. Well, thank you, Danny. And again, I'm, I'm delighted to be here and delighted to be connecting with your uh, your friends and fellow travelers and those interested in all things metaphysical and and some of the uh, problems going on in society. And as we know, they run very, very deep. Most people are completely unaware of things going on. So the big focus for me, I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one healing work for all sorts of things for people, big and small. But I also do a lot of metaphysical outreach and paranormal work. And this is focused on the main area of spirit attachments and spirit interference, but that quickly led me to appreciate more and more that the extraterrestrials who are working against humanity are very much a part of our lives on all levels of society, and they've influenced a number of my clients, and they're also exploiting and partnering with dark spirits, these kind of demonic energies, and manipulate them and use them as a tool to undermine people 
and to keep people subjugated. So I do removals, I do cleansings to remove all sorts of negative energies and karmic repair because karma is a huge force. It's beneath and motivating everything that we do or say, feel, experience. And it's a factor that makes the universe go. So everything we do, both good and bad, cycles back to us at some point. So everything we do to help ourselves and one another will count in that plus column and will help us personally down the line. But the, the problem that we face is there are many hidden hands manipulating people subconsciously through mind control efforts. There is an alien abduction program going on and they're involved in manipulating governments and the military at all levels with varying agendas. So this is kind of the backdrop. And recently I have started to go back and connect with some of the people I've helped who are now back in the light. I've done a lot of channeling of light beings, archangels and so on, and a lot of lower spirits, higher selves of people and so on. And it's been very illuminating. And they have been very encouraging of me to spread the information that they provide to me because it's important. People need to wake up. They need to be told what's really going on. And so some of them, including celebrities, are very much willing to have me use what they say, use their names and reputations to help spread this message. So this was kind of the inspiration to reach out to you once again and kind of go to that level as a next step, a next exercise. And so I started doing this on my own and I'm doing my own ongoing research to learn about healing and about karma and the divine realm and how the universe works. So I have a lot of high level experts in the light that I do channelings with, but I know your, your focus with this ET problem is very much in the forefront for you. So, so I'm happy to see what we can do and add some more information and encouragement hopefully because none of this is really uh, t to be feared and to be greatly alarmed about because this is nothing new this has been going on for thousands of years we've been under the thumb of these guys for that long so actually the light is tipping the balance and helping in a more direct way and purposeful way this is what the shift in consciousness is all about. The spiritual community is all excited about the shift and everyone is focused on the happy talk, which is fine. We need that. We need to raise ourselves up in the vibration. But they are largely unaware that the major reason for the shift in consciousness is to get us out from beneath the oppressors by allowing us to once again connect to our divinity and regain some of the things we've lost. So the light is very eager to help us at all levels and all ways with this. So knowledge is power. Yes. So true. So um, you, you, when we had some discussions now that as a result of, of some, like you used to help dark spirits go back to the light or disincarnate yes. spirits who had not successfully transitioned. So, and now you're spending more time um, interacting with people who had, who had successful transitions or had unsuccessful transitions then went to the light and you're reconnecting with them in, in the light. And this has led to other things that you've added to your repertoire. One of, one of which you mentioned, which I thought was fantastic, was uh, autistic kids. Yes. Yes, my, my channeling ability, uh, to my surprise, I have found has a pretty wide reach and I've been inspired to think of new applications and that's one of them. So, you know, the problem of autism is, is quite varied, but some are quite disconnected. Some of these people are really a mystery to their family members and a burden as well. And I know from talking to the light that this is not truly a medical problem. This is a mismatch in energy between a light being 
who is not fully adapted to be in a human body, but it is trying to, and it's it's trying to stuff an elephant hmm. into a human-sized physical frame, and it doesn't work so well. And they simply can't go down to our level to communicate effectively. So they're really quite advanced beings, and it's not how they appear. They appear to be impaired and uh, uh really be challenged intellectually, cognitively, and of course physical have uh, physical problems sometimes as well and behavioral uh, abnormalities that make them social outcasts and, and so on. So I got the idea of, and this was gifted to me by someone in the light, saying, because I was asking about autism and what is the cause and so on, and it was pointed out that I could channel such people and that it would be a really wonderful exercise. So people with an autistic loved one could make a connection and I could offer that service to them. So maybe for the first time they would have a sense of truly who that person is. And I had a cousin who was autistic growing up and uh, it's quite a, an unhappy saga in many ways. But he ended up doing okay and was supported and loved. And so I decided I would channel my cousin in the light and ask him about all this. And he was so enthusiastic and so appreciative of my outreach and told me he will support me in this undertaking and that he will personally participate in any session like this that I do to add his energy to make it completely successful and rewarding. So. Again, this is what I'm saying. The light is eager to help on all levels. And that's why we come down, because we were light beings before we incarnated. So we have lots of friends we don't know we have. Right. Carl, so does that extend to like... Application. Does you know, that there are other applications as well. Another one that I want to do, I've not done yet, is to channel people's loved ones who are in a coma or vegetative state. To connect with them, find out what is happening with them, and what their intentions might be at that point. Some might really, truly want to be unplugged, and also to be released from their loved ones, so that they can move to the light where they really need to be. Right. And people don't realize they can hold loved ones back from going to the light right. by being too attached to them. The the outsized grief, and pain, and longing to cling to them, even though they're dead, or in this case, they're halfway there. Uh, this, can, this can retard a person's successful transition. So I run into this in, in earthbound spirits, but there's some kind of still half in the physical. So that would be another example of what can be done. And there, there are others as well that are quite revolutionary. I was thinking of, um for the elderly, like with dementia or uh, Alzheimer's? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Yes, and that's another one that I want to do because I, I would like to get a feel from those people what they're experiencing within their consciousness. Mm -hmm. And again, it's, it's a, a difficulty in using the mind to create words to communicate in a logical sequence. Right. And it doesn't mean there isn't a mind in there right. that has perception and awareness and thinking capability. Yes. So this is another area I would, I would love to explore and help to bring to light the, the broader meaning mm -hmm. and also some possibilities for what can be done to help such individuals in their care, if nothing else, yeah. let alone their personal situation and what their destiny might be. But many times people misunderstand such individuals and underappreciate the fact they still can perceive what's happening. It's just like people who are asleep or under anesthesia. They may be aware of their surroundings. A part of their mind is always listening and aware. Mm -hmm. so, so there's ways to communicate with such beings and, and provide some help and to assist the loved ones too. Oh so yeah. This is a this is a yet another wonderful uh potential. No kidding. <laughs> My so mind is racing thinking of all the different scenarios and everything and how helpful that could be to people. 
Well, I'm, I'm looking for uh, people who are open to these sorts of uh, ideas and to offer my services. And I'd love to partner with them and explore what can be done to help a loved one in, in this situation. And yeah. it would help all, all of us to learn yes. and, and grow. Absolutely. So do um, you think it'd be a good time now to start with the, uh, with the questions for, uh, for do, we, do you have a preference on which one we do first, Carl? No, no I, I, it, it's up to you. I think this, the, I'm, I'm following your lead here. I'm okay. going to be the channeler and okay. so I'm going to be holding my consciousness off to the side and watching what happens. And my job is to not get in the way. Okay. All right, so we'll go ahead and in the order that they're listed, we're, we'll start with Dwight Eisenhower, then we'll move on to, to this unidentified agent who has a connection to Dwight Eisenhower. Uh, but this 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 individual uh, probably passed away uh, right around the time of the Eisenhower presidency. He w he allegedly worked in some type of a secret service capacity, probably predecessor to the CIA, which would have been the OSS during World War II. He was in. Uh, he was a lower level um, agent of some sort that had a high level of respect for um, Eisenhower. And then at some point after the war, this fellow apparently found out about uh, extraterrestrials and secret societies information that he apparently believed that Eisenhower was not aware of, and he was trying to get this information to to Eisenhower. Um, so he'd be, you know, so he'd be armed in dealing with what he was dealing with at the time. Um, uh, uh, so, in, in, so in any case, he w he was trying to work through the chain of command, get this information to Eisenhower. He was uh, he was marginalized. People said, you know, well, he, you know, we don't believe you, or he's not going to believe you. Uh, eventually, this person was uh, let go of his position, and two weeks later, um, allegedly killed. And no one knew really really knew what happened or why this happened, but he was he was uh, you know, the implication here is that he was silenced. Um, so um, there was kind of an interesting interesting um, uh, person in this whole mix. If if people are curious about Eisenhower's role in in this whole extraterrestrial question, I would recommend uh, Dr. Michael Sala's book. Um, Kennedy's Last Stand, where he goes into um, some detail about um, uh, Dwight Eisenhower and this whole question of, uh, of the extraterrestrial uh, presence and influence on the U.S. government and, and the world. So um, there's a little bit of background. That'll be the second person we get into. So we'll start with Dwight Eisenhower. And I've got, I've got seven questions uh, for, for Dwight, seven for the unidentified agent, and then seven questions for... Uh, Oh, actually, eight questions for um, James Forrestal, who was also a key figure during that time. He 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 was a he was a, a, a parent, well he died under very suspicious circumstances um, at Bethesda, Maryland um, uh, Naval Hospital uh, back in 1949, I think it was. Okay, shall we start? I'm as ready as I can be. Okay, all right. So this first one's for Dwight Eisenhower. Um, were you wait, aware? Wait, wait. Oh, I have to do my thing. Oh, okay. The way this works is that I go into a trance state. All righty. To open up my subconscious gateway. Okay. And this allows the energy to come and enter. I have to set up protection around the work because I want to exclude any outside interlopers, any interference. A potential imposter. This is one of the big, big, big pitfalls in doing this sort of work. Okay. And just for the benefit of your viewers, what I have been told by more than one divine source is that more than 90%, more than 90% of channelers of divine beings, ascended masters, you know, spiritual teachers and so on of great renown are being duped. They are not channeling who they think they are. This is part of the mind control manipulation that these people are targeted to interfere with their work by slipping in below the radar 
edging the divine figure out of the way and taking over the conversation. That's not as hard to do as you might think because the divine realm is neutral in these matters. Anything that happens here in the earth plane is up to us. So if someone drops their guard the least little bit, and starts talking with an imposter, they start to develop more and more and more of a relationship. And then it's their conscious choice. The divine realm won't get in the way. So they can come in and present, pretend to be, you know, St. Michael or, or Gabriel or Archangel Raphael, it, it, whoever it might be. And they will be allowed to do that because just like a human imposter can pretend to be someone and carry out a crime. You know, God doesn't come down and stop them. Right. So this is no different. Dealing with the higher realms has similar ground rules and pitfalls. Okay. So, so I'm going to set up the protection, go into this trance state, and then when I have him on board, so to speak, because he okay. will come down into my energy and I will feel that, okay. he will say he is here. Okay. And then you're on. Okay. Then you you take it from there. Okay. I'm just the vessel. Okay. All right. Just give me a moment to uh, get this launched. Okay. Very and good. And then when I let him go, I'll tell you, and then we'll have to start over with the next subject. Okay. But it won't take long to to reestablish things. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Hello, this is Dwight Eisenhower speaking. Hello, thanks for joining us. Were you aware during your presidency of ancient human secret group or groups working in concert with any extraterrestrial group or groups for the control of the planet? This I was not aware of at that time, but I was aware of the existence of physical extraterrestrials violating U.S. airspace and interacting with us in a variety of ways. And so the stories of the Roswell crash and recovery of debris, including a living extraterrestrial, are quite true. And there were other recoveries as well. This I was aware of. and was very eager to learn all that was possible, particularly about their intentions, first and foremost. And then secondly, to see what they would be willing to do to help us in the world effort to achieve lasting peace and stability in our role as the watchdog and the ultimate authority which we earned the right to do through our military successes. So these were the two main agendas I had and I certainly am surprised now at how naive I was in thinking this might be a first occurrence and a new initiative that would likely bear great fruit in the help of all our intentions for finally at last achieving a worldwide stability 
I never dreamed there would be an evil underside to what was happening. Although there was apprehension and nervousness to be sure because this was so new for me and for all those who I interacted with. The story went on from there and became quite amazing in its dimensions. And it was not long before things took a much darker turn for our forces. Being in the White House, I was fairly removed from the intricacy and the detailed obtaining of information and the interaction and the surveying of the information, both the physical materials as well as this extraterrestrial being. But I was given some feedback, although it was not long before there was a huge communication gap that raised alarm bells for me and almost ended my presidency and my life as well. Looking back, I know there was a plot against me and this almost came to fruition. So I was skirting with great danger without truly realizing what was happening. But this set the scene for a more public awareness of the alien presence. And that was very much supported by the light in bringing forward this information, followed by many impulsed sources of knowledge and insight and perceptions that led to many screenplays about the existence of extraterrestrials. And of course, these were mixed, both good and bad, some raising fear, some giving false hope. But the reason for it all was to help everyone become more aware of the possibility of alien involvement and this is an essential step in raising everyone up and achieving what the goals are for the shift in consciousness. It is very much about overturning the alien suppression, both the long-term alteration of the human in disconnecting us from the spiritual core, as well as the cultural dis connection and miscommunication leading to all manner of grievances and combat. So this is the number one subject of great urgency, coupled with dealing at all levels with their allies in the cause. And this includes the spirit community of the Dark Ones. Were, were you given the names of the extraterrestrial group or groups that you dealt with? They were not revealing of their origin, only saying they were from the stars and they were here in a learning capacity to do scientific observation with the aim eventually to make a diplomatic outreach once they felt comfortable in doing so. And so this was very much disarming and was received in a positive way by me and the military as well. And of course, our whole beings were so conditioned to maintaining secrecy about all things that were new and in particular that could confer some military or political advantage for the United States. This was deemed top secret or above in all levels at all times and in all ways until we could find out what the implications might be. And the decisions were made to keep this secret from the public 
and we were advised quite strongly about this by the extraterrestrials themselves who we had already begun to trust seeing no evidence of weaponry no evidence of hostility other than their presence being a violation of our airspace so we had no reason to question their motives but we look to their counsel and leadership as being clearly advanced beings and shared the concerns they recounted about not causing mass panic and the disruption of the existing institutions and recommended that we go slow and develop a long-term plan to eventually begin to share such knowledge when the proper foundation was in place. So these were the early impressions and the early recommendations. And again, this was all complete propaganda from them as they never intended to support us in a meaningful way and never wished to have their doings broadcast more widely. And so that is the reason for the continued secrecy. It is being guaranteed and controlled and enforced and supported at all levels in government and military. And this is very much a consequence of mind control. It is not just that the people are self-serving or evil in some way. They truly believe this is an absolute necessity and they have been programmed to believe this. So do not think too unkindly of your military officials. They are hapless dupes in this in the same way everyone in the public and other aspects of society are similarly programmed to be in a state of complacency about the mounting number of UFO sightings the growing number of alien abduction accounts and so on is the theory regarding cooperation between the U.S. federal government and the breakaway Nazi civilization that elements within the U.S. government could eventually infiltrate and take power correct? And as a follow-up, is it, it appears that was never accomplished. Is this correct? This is true. The extension of the Nazi regime is really being orchestrated and manned by the reptilian extraterrestrials. They were actively working with the Nazi leaders and the Nazi scientists during World War II. And this, as researchers have correctly determined, was the reason for many of the more advanced weapons of the time, and in particular the aircraft that were under development that were more UFO-like in design, but they were interested in all manner of alien capabilities, especially the telepathic abilities and the ability to manipulate energy, which they had seen demonstrated. This they were not able to duplicate but were very much interested in all things regarding consciousness to move in that direction. With the end of the war and the collapse of the Nazi regime, the reptilians simply moved on to other targets. The entire saga was an alien manipulation to promote that regime to encourage its emergence and to cause the greatest possible harm to the human community. If a world leader and world power can be made to subjugate all of humanity, then this takes 
all the burden away from them as they desire to do the same thing. But they know this would cause casualties for them. It would be messy despite their superiority. And so they use the human as a tool and a weapon to do the dirty work for them. That was the primary reason for the emergence of the axis of powers and the agenda for world conquest. It was all orchestrated, engineered, planned, and put into motion through mind control manipulation of the German people first, then the Italians and the Japanese to create a series of militaristic regimes who could work in concert and, gl and gain global dominance. This was the objective and it mattered not to the reptilians how reckless, savage, or ultimately self-destructive it might prove to be because they simply do not care or value what happens to any human beings. So the vestiges that remain are the seeds of knowledge still present in many humans who may have a kind of personality or an inner alignment with certain leanings in terms of authoritarianism that might lead them to see an appeal in Nazi regalia or the kind of thinking involved with their legacy. And so there can always be new acolytes brought into a group to carry out that sort of focused agenda once again. And you see this in various groups that peer the skinheads and so forth and the neo-Nazi movement. These are all forays into human manipulation. They are not unilateral choices by those people in creating the organizations and drawing followers. It is always the case that an alien agenda is showing itself in causing those leaders who emerge to take that role and put it into practice. So anything of this kind that you encounter is first and foremost a reptilian-led propaganda effort at sabotage, infiltration, and domination eventually down the road. Okay. Not to say they will be successful, but this is an ongoing kind of arm wrestling that human is doing with the interlopers. Okay, I'm going to skip over uh, question four and five because it was addressed to some extent with the answers to the other questions. Um, so this is question number six. What is your understanding of the long-term plan for humanity coming from the powers that have ruled this planet for the last several thousand years? The long-term plan of those who were here first to do the greatest damage is the ultimate enslavement of humanity, to use them for a time as slaves and strictly as slaves and this they are doing now they have taken many to their own planet and those individuals are truly lost in their world and living terrible terrible lives the rest of humanity is at risk from this long-term plan at least technically speaking, because this is their intention. So we will not mince words with you or try to put a happy face on this. This is the literal truth and always has been. They started thousands of years ago in 
subjugating humans and altering and manipulating them to be subservient and used humans as a slave race to do mining and acquisition of materials, minerals and such and have that as a source for use by themselves with the human doing the work and this served two purposes as well. It became the means to begin the process of control and subjugation where humans do need something to do. It is easier to create slave camps, slave work projects, and so on than it is to create prisons because humans are not happy being contained and being idle. And so this was a win-win that they arranged, but it was strictly tactical to have an immediate benefit but their overall objective eventually is to eliminate human and have the planet for themselves. And they also wish to push out the other aliens present. And we are speaking of the Anunnaki here, and their story is very much as has been described by others and the scholars who see the legacy described among the cultural artifacts and the ancient writings. This was not a fairy tale or folklore. This was a literal account of eyewitnesses who participated and handed down the story until it could be put into written form so the Anunnaki are the great taskmasters underlying all of the alien agenda and presence. The others here have other self-serving motivations and they are being tolerated and again exploited tactically as minions to do some dirty work and again this simply serves them the Anunnaki by taking some of the heat away from them and allowing the other aliens to be the instruments of our destruction. Okay, um, were you close to James Forrestal and did you agree with his opinions regarding public disclosure of the UFO and extraterrestrial information? I was close to him and I had tremendous respect for him. I considered him a true friend and a patriotic American. We did have a difference of opinion about the disclosure of the alien presence and this caused some rift between us but it was only a working issue in the sense of one colleague disagreeing with another as the commander-in-chief and president of the United States my word had the force of law and so I was not stressed by this nor concerned as I knew his loyalty could be counted on I was not aware of any plan he may have had to disclose things independently in a public fashion. This would have been a quite alarming development and I never expected this would happen. This was really of greater concern to the intelligence agencies who saw this possibility and were monitoring him and keeping him under observation. Their reach is quite large. They have connections within all branches of the military and that was true even during World War II and beyond. And so they are the most dangerous 
human link to the extraterrestrials desiring human suffering because they are part of the very infrastructure of government and the military and in a position to do great harm and they are believed and trusted because they are appointed and placed to have key positions of authority the truth of things is no one can truly be trusted in this kind of situation because if there is not one who is an alien imposter directly it is certain there has been corruption on multiple levels within the person that makes them lean in the desired direction such individuals will either not be sympathetic to an opposing perspective or will actively oppose it and fight to the death against it against all reason logic common sense or feelings of charity or any kind of divine impulse the level of mind control is the most intense and the most successful among those individuals in such key positions of authority this is only logical from the standpoint they are the very individuals in a position to create opposition there have been some rare persons who have escaped their influence and this creates the seeds of opportunity to have a counter force and a kind of inner guerrilla activity to put roadblocks in the way of some of the worst plans and darkest agendas but such individuals typically don't last for long because they eventually come to the attention of the more darkly influenced and then become outcasts within the organization at first as not being with the program and then eventually are phased out through reassignment or discharge in some cases as well they are eliminated and there have been many many killings to maintain a tight grip on the government and military in Forrestal's case this is in fact what happened he was assassinated to prevent him from sharing his knowledge with anyone the risk was great with that mindset and perspective that he would tell too many people not all of whom could be as trusted to maintain secrecy and confidentiality and that was the greatest risk so steps were taken to eliminate him this was a tragic loss not only for him and his family but for the nation as well looking back now it is clear that if he had been allowed to blow the whistle this could have greatly accelerated the ability of human to rise to the occasion and take back more power and begin to shift things in an, an earlier time frame and to a greater degree than even where things are now but this is a relic of the past and one possibility that existed for a time but was then snuffed out all of the light workers leave their mark and all have greater potential than they themselves know and the 
difficulty this causes for them is not appreciating themselves enough, not understanding the truly great power they have. And this is better understood by the opposition. So when they are identified as risks and then manipulated in a way to sideline them, there is a great loss to the cause. And in most cases, the individuals themselves, if caught early enough, still are not aware of what they were capable of and would have accomplished. So this cover-up and suppression has been quite effective, but is growing in the level of friction and the intensity required to keep a lid on things. There will be a turning point and a tipping of the energies towards what the light is supporting here. So all can take heart in this. It is not as dire as our words might suggest. At the present time, the light is winning, but this does need to be maintained, and anything that can be added to the cause will accelerate that eventuality. And this would be a tremendous contribution. Okay, I'd like to add uh, something before we're closing. We're going to have to take a break, but um, um, I want to thank you, and I want to assume that you uh, have transitioned, that you are in the light, you're not an earthbound spirit. And I'd also like to acknowledge um, your ancestor or your your descendant, um, Laura Eisenhower, who's. Um, a great worker, a great light worker. Um, she's very much respected in uh, the community that I uh, count myself a member. And um, so I would just like to offer an opportunity to address the, and to confirm that you are in the light, you're not an earthbound spirit, and give you an opportunity to speak about um, Laura and anything else you'd like to pass on to, to Carl, to myself, and to our listeners. Yes, I appreciate the opportunity to speak more personally because I am still connected with very, very strong, loving bonds to my family and descendants. And all are part of a soul, a soul group who have been together for a huge span of time. And we work together in our projects again and again. So she is a shining example of the continuation of this legacy. We support one another when present together in the physical, and we support one another when some are in the physical and others back in the light. This is where I am, and from this vantage point, am in the best position to provide support and encouragement. I am with her often and support all she does, and am working directly with Creator and with her higher self to impulse her with thoughts, with ideas, and encouragement and sending love as well to raise her up and to help her to stay strong. This is what we do as light beings in helping one another. And so she will be another point of the many spears who are advancing the awareness and knowledge needed to truly help humanity in a positive way. This has rarely been more greatly needed, and not because these are the darkest of times, but simply because humanity has never been closer to an ultimate tipping point to have the light burst forth and to have a 
state of heaven on earth, this is within reach now, and all are working in earnest to speed the day forward. And this is what she does, and all who live in our memory are contributing to. Everyone here in the physical has a sole purpose, and many are continuing to struggle and suffer, and they live very restricted and primitive lives in many cases. This is not without purpose. There are important karmic reasons for this, and there are important lessons for all of the rest who look on in shock and horror at the seeming impossibility of helping so many who are seemingly in a quicksand of their own making or cultural history and predisposition that seems intransigent and so trapped in the past there is no way to bridge the the gap those things are still ongoing because they need to be worked out and in the old-fashioned way so to speak through a karmic rebalancing the hard way as you would describe it paying one's debts incurring personal suffering in the rebalancing of suffering caused to others and so on this is an old paradigm that will be changing and part of the repayments by so many in the level of suffering that you observe is accomplishing the turning of the wheel to a point when things can move in an entirely new direction and this will eventually lead to a world where the healing of karma will be extremely rapid and will not involve pain it will simply be a self-realization and will happen almost without thinking the beings in the light would find it almost unthinkable to harm another and would never ever do it. You can contrast that with the many human dramas playing out across the planet and see quite starkly how far things are away from that simple description but this is what is in store for humanity in the future and what we mean by having heaven on earth the ability to heal the self and one another will be profound rapid and understood completely by everyone and there will not be lingering pain or any darkness spread and this will completely change the nature of existence this is how things were always meant to be and what everyone is striving for who are progressing on a soul journey this is not the only dark place but it is one of the darkest and the upliftment and the growth of the light worker community is carrying the energy forward to a great new day that is coming so we applaud all who are involved in the effort and support our loved ones first and foremost for that is a deep deep soul connection as you can imagine from my service I have a deep deep soul connection to all I helped to serve in my last incarnation and that has not changed and will not disappear so we are happy to be a further service if you wish at a later time
to revisit this or other topics, and we would be happy to help you in any way we can to shed light on things and to help support your efforts to spread knowledge and awareness. That is step one. If the humanity as a whole could be awakened to the reality of what is happening, the world would change instantly because of the power of human consciousness to make it so. The task is harder when there are only hundreds to a few thousand light workers who are focused on the problem. That is carrying a huge, huge load. It is not that they cannot succeed. It is only that it takes a bit longer. The more you reach, the more you awaken, the greater the energy grows and the collective effort and this will turn the tide. So we wish you all the best success in everything you do. And we are now connected and we are in your corner. Thank you. Okay, we'll take a break now. I'm going to let Carl come back. And uh, we'll be back with the, uh, with the rest of this interview. Okay. All right. Well, there it is. There it is. Okay, Carl, I'm going to hang up and call you back because my file is already at one hour and 20 minutes. So I'm, okay. uh, that's the way I have to work it. Yeah, understood. Okay, okay so I'll call you back for about five minutes. All righty. Okay, Bye. thank you. <laughs> 